the other major influence in the book is is your brother Yoni. And uh, for the viewers at home, Yonatan Netanyahu was the commander of a very famous uh, Operation Thunderbolt, the rescue at Entebbe in Uganda, where uh, terrorists had hijacked an Air France plane in 1976. I believe it was July 4th, 1976. Fireworks going on over here, different kind of fireworks elsewhere. And um, and Yoni was the commander of the unit that led uh, the very famous and successful rescue to save those passengers. Uh, that changed the course of your life. The trajectory then sent you into public service and politics. But something struck me when I was reading the book is that when Yoni was alive, uh, he was killed in the operation tragically. Um, and after that, you became... You founded the Jonathan Institute, you became an expert in terrorism, and eventually went into public service. But when Yoni was alive, he said you would end up here. He said you would be prime minister of Israel, and you weren't really sure what he saw. And so now I'm wondering if you if you could answer that question. I'm wondering now, looking back on this and all the time that you've spent in public service, what have you learned about yourself and the state of Israel, I guess also, that Yoni already knew? You know, Seth, I have no idea because it's it's. Uh, I was shocked by this because we were very close as brothers, and uh, we served in the same lead unit, which my younger brother joined too. So we were three brothers in this tiny unit. It's like Navy SEALs and British SAS combined, but it's only a hundred fighters, and three of them were three brothers, two of whom were officers, uh, Yoni and myself, and they had to separate us and. Uh, an operation, so you know, so not more than one would get killed if something happened, and uh, we had quite a lot of uh, conflicts on that. Okay, uh, but when Yoni was killed, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, we have this national uh, yearly commemoration, uh, the uh, date of his fall at Entebbe, and about fifty years later, uh, one of us, or forty-five years later. Um, one of his uh, friends from university days, when I was twenty and he was uh, uh, he was twenty three, or maybe I was eighteen, even, and he was uh, uh, I was nineteen and he was twenty two, and he studied at the Hebrew University at the time before he made his way back to the military, and he said to this friend who came to me, who approached me nearly half a century later, you know. Yoni said at that time that you one day would be the leader of Israel, the prime minister of Israel. And I said, are you sure? That, that doesn't make sense because he never said that to me. Uh, and he said, uh, well, he saw in you things you didn't see in, in yourself. And it's true. I didn't have an idea or even a, uh, a notion that I would one day enter politics, let alone become the prime minister of Israel, let alone the, the longest serving prime minister of Israel. I, I never had an inkling of that, okay? Uh, and when I look back and I start I, I'm asking myself, why would he think that? Because I, I just had very strong views which um, about history and about politics, which uh, uh, were influenced, obviously, by my father, but not that much at that time, because I really got to know my father more years later when I finished the, the military. Remember, I'm, at the, the age of 23, I went to study in the United States, and that's where my father and I spent time together. So I was just a very avid reader of history uh, and of politics. And I would mouth my, my, you know, my views with, you know, uh, um, I wouldn't say childish certitude, but the certitude of young young people who are certain they know everything. And I would mouth them to Yoni. And Yoni was a very, very, very um, uh, uh, thoughtful person. He wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't, um, uh, he wasn't impetuous. But he heard those, um, me expounding that because I wouldn't share it with my teammates in the army. We were too busy doing all these missions, you know, risking our lives or navigating uh at night someplace. Uh, I didn't share that. With, I didn't talk politics at all with my teammates, but I talked politics and history with him. And for some reason, he thought that I would become, I would lead Israel one day. I haven't the faintest idea, you know, 
I first I didn't believe this person when he said that. He said, "Well, my wife was there too, and she heard him too." And he actually wrote me a letter to uh, <laughs> cement that because I, I, you know, and I, I included, by the way, in the book. I think in, in uh, uh, yeah, I do. Just I do for posterity, because, just just the I told you so. It's written down. <laughs> no, not only for posterity, because because I found it so incredible. So the answer to your question is, I don't know how he could see that. I saw things in him, and I thought, frankly, that he could be that leader. And for some reason, he thought that I would be that leader. Uh, and uh, it's impossible for me to ask him that, obviously. 